welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the Unattractive Entertainment Community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we return to you once again with an episode that's divisible by four. And so as it was written in the stones and the lore all those years ago that we began <laughs> Haunt Weekly... I believe a man came down from a mountain carrying two stone tablets to proclaim There are this. no mountains in New Orleans. Off Monkey Hill in the zoo. <laughs> Whatever, that's the highest point in the city. Look it up. <laughs> um, with two stone tablets. Seriously, it's dangerous as fuck to climb. You really shouldn't do it. <laughs> but that's why the whole idea is to let kids climb on the fucking... Anyways, he came down to the mountain and proclaimed every fourth episode the news episode. <laughs> fucking ruining that. <laughs> I, had a, I had a bit going, God damn it. <laughs> I know. Anyways, yes, indeed. That means this is, since it is divisible by four, it is time to do the, the news. news. And it, I'm going to be honest with y'all, it's been kind of a late news week. Yeah. And you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. <laughs> so, because, like, the last two years, even during the off-season, like, the deep depths of the off-season like we are now, we've never had trouble, in the last couple of years, we've never had trouble filling news episodes because of so much COVID shit. Yeah. And so much other horrible news and haunts. The fact we're getting a bit of a break, it's probably a good thing. So if class gets out early today, mm -hmm. smile about it, please. <laughs> Don't hate us. Be happy. Join yeah. us in uh, being joyful over that. Mm -hmm. And if you do need more Haunt Weekly after we let out early, I understand. I need more of me, too. <laughs> you can get more at hauntweekly.com. Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly's YouTube channel. Easiest way to access the back archives. We're also available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. And yeah, let's get right into it because we actually have a lot of stuff before the news to get through. We do. So yeah. let's uh, start on it. So the first thing is, Crystal, you at you added, you added wanted to have a housekeeping note. Yeah. So I'm giving it to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically... One of the reasons that a lot of the podcasts have been late lately is that I've been having some health issues yeah. and it causes it to where I can't always be ready to record these um, or I have brain fog in the middle of them. So you'll hear long pauses whenever I'm trying to talk. Yeah. Um, this has also been one of the reasons we haven't gone back to live broadcast. Right. The weather still is kind of fucking with us. So. It 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 is. There is that. There is that. That's that is an element of it. But, but there's no way that I can keep up with comments and well, the and notes and everything. The way and, things have been lately, and hopefully we're on the path to recovery now. Yeah. Seem, things seem to be turning a corner here. Uh, that's why, why I'm talking about yeah. it. It's because we've we've done testing. We know what's wrong. We know how to fix it. We're on. Yeah, we're but on the we're on the correct path yeah. now. It feels like it to me, at least. Yeah. Um. That's why we haven't done live recordings though, because. It's kind of been, we do these whenever you can. <laughs> yeah. Whenever the energy, the clear head, and everything lines up to do it. Right, exactly. And why on a lot of the podcasts, especially the last two months, I know I'm the talkative one anyway, mm -hmm. but I know there's been even more of me than yeah. usual. That's also why. It's not just me walking all over Crystal and trying no. to like completely dominate the podcast. It's trying to help. <laughs> yeah. So... Thank you all for your patience. Hopefully, things are turning a corner, like like I said, and mm -hmm. everything is going to be better. And week after week after week, if things improve, like we've already seen some drastic improvement. Yeah. We've already seen some, like in the past couple of days. So if we continue this, yeah, we may be back to normal sooner rather than later. Yeah, but, exactly. But yeah, and I understand you didn't want to talk about it until you had an answer and you at least... Right. Had a fucking clue what the future held. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what well, the end game here was. Yeah, exactly. And and basically, the long story short, I know too late. <laughs> um, <laughs> too late. Is that I have anemia right now. Yeah. Um, but they seem that it to think that it will be short term. Yep. Um, and, yeah, it, it, we're definitely so, on the path. It's just a matter of how long that path is. Yeah, how long it's going to take. So, and, what, and how drastic of action it will take. But 
it, you're on the path. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry about her. She will be fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been a lot of what's been going on. Like, you know, I know it's been kind of frustrating that we haven't talked about that much. And we had that whole intent of going back to live broadcast in January. Yes. But once again, the weather fucked us. Uh-huh. I mean, Jesus Christ, it was colder in New Orleans and Ottawa, Canada. And that's really when it started to crank up yeah. my my issues. Yeah. So. so between those two things, we haven't been able to do live recordings. We've just been catching these when we get a minute and when everything aligns. And, yeah, that's why a couple of times it's been late on Monday, because we had to record Monday evening, because Sunday just wasn't a good day. Yeah. <laughs> it's really that simple. And so, yeah, we'll leave it there. I appreciate y'all's patience. She's going to be fine. Aren't you? Yes. You're going to be yes. fine? You're going to be fine? Yeah, no, she'll be, she'll be very yeah. much fine. We're taking good care of her here. Ellie and I are giving her all the love and all the support and care we can. Yes, all the iron. All the iron. <laughs> um I swear to God, if she gets magnetism powers from this, it will be awesome. <laughs> I don't. I am Iron Woman. Yeah, I don't. I think don't that's think how this works. I don't think that's what that means no. either. But yes, no, that would be so cool. Yeah. Uh, but no. But anyways, just just know that's what's going on. But anyways, we asked you all a question last week, mm-hmm. and it was an interesting one. It was, and it was: Is your <clears throat> haunt full touch, light touch, or no touch, and why? Well, the answers were one-sided. Holy yeah. crap. Overwhelmingly no touch. And it's interesting because, well, we did have one, well, it's real fast. We did have one exception. Uh, Timothy Greider, I think is how you say your name, his name, mm-hmm. um, says his haunt is, quote-unquote, full contact extreme haunt. But out of all the comments and all the replies everywhere, mm-hmm. um, it was... No touch, and here are the reasons why. And the reasons why were what interested me the most. Because mm-hmm. the thing that came up over and over and over again, and really surprised me, and something we we talked about briefly, right? But didn't really hone in on, was how it's safer for the actors. Yeah, well, definitely. Yeah, and we mentioned it. I know we talked about a yeah. s- retreat spaces and all that some, but we didn't really like lay into that topic. And apparently that was a big part of the motivation for a lot of haunts to stay no touch and non-contact. But we also did hear from people that are employing creative methods of integrating touch, just yeah. not direct human contact. Exactly. And I think that is bravo, bravo. Yeah. bravo. Bravi, 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 see me. Yeah, because yeah, even... <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, no, and, and no touch. Um... Like five people got that joke. <laughs> Five people out there. If you got that joke, you better comment saying you appreciated it. <laughs> I don't know if it's even a joke, just a like word association, just a reference, automatic. random out of nowhere reference. If yeah. you got that, please comment. It made me feel less lonely. Yeah, just just put the appropriate gifts in the comments. Yeah. They yeah. exist. Um, all right. So this week's question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Is what it, this actually ties in directly to one of the stories we're talking about this yeah. week? So you'll see why. Mm-hmm. What is the current maximum and minimum group size you allow in your haunt? Basically, what are the group sizes you permit to go through your haunt? Yeah. Um, with ours, it's a fairly strict one to four. Yeah. You can be a lone person going through that. We, we try to avoid that, especially if we're running a line. Yes, definitely. Uh, we try to pair people up, and yeah, usually we can do that pretty well. Because that's just it. People are incredibly flexible in a line mm-hmm. like this. Like, hey, we got a one person here. Any, any groups of two that want to like hijack with them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the thing is, every time I've done it, the group I call up is almost always convinced I just set them up with a plant. Yeah. They don't trust that person. They don't trust that motherfucker one bit. Even though it's <laughs> literally just some dude. <laughs> Yeah. Today, you know, it's just some person that showed up. Yeah. I have no idea who this person is. I can can barely see them through my mask. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Uh, I don't trust you. He's gonna get us. You get in front. <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking time, people are so mistrusting of us. It's like yeah. we're trying to scare them or something. I know. <laughs> Weirdest thing, but yeah. So four is our max. We do occasionally allow five if the fifth person. If breaking up the group would mean an unaccompanied child. Yes. That is basically the only scenario we'll allow five. We never go above five. Yeah, and, and kids are smaller and more compact, so... <laughs> yeah, four adults, <laughs> always no. the max. <laughs> yeah. Four adults is always the max. And believe me, in our haunt, we have seen four adults do some damage. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. 
I mean, think about it. If everyone in that group is about 200 pounds or 200, 200, 200 mm. that is half a ton of human flesh hitting things when that group collapsed yeah. on something. That is a lot of meat, a human steak there. <laughs> so, yeah, just something to think about. Anyways, so, yeah, what is your current maximum minimum group size? Very interested for reasons we will explore in a little bit. A little bit. All right, first things, well, next thing's next. It's not first things. First, we've done two things. <laughs> Third thing's third. Doesn't sound nearly as good, though. It doesn't. It is also an even-numbered episode. That means we do our conference reminders, and I will kick it off this time. Yes. I'm always kicking it over to you to begin when I'm taking this one. Okay, fine. Coming up February 19th through the 20th. I believe that is called Next Weekend. Uh Uh-huh. Most of the world. Haunt X DIY Hunters and Halloween Expo in Pomona, California at the Fairplex. Building 9. Um, featuring an asylum costume party on the 19th, hauntx.com for more details. Okay. Then March 17th through the 20th, it is Trans World's Halloween and Attraction Show in St. Louis, Missouri at the America Center. It is co-located with their Christmas show and their Room Escape Conference. Um, you go to the Ha Show, H-A-A-S-H-O-W.com. Yeah. I'm jumping in there because I completely forgot to update the listing for this. Yeah. Uh, that's on me. I'm just going to take that out of yeah, the Take that out of the That's very appropriate. Yeah. But just go to the Ha Show to find out what the cool stuff they're doing. You, you know about Trans World. You don't need us to tell you about that. Yeah. You, you do you. All right. But here's something you may need us to tell you about. Mm-hmm. On May 13th or the 15th in Portland, Oregon, it is the West Coast Haunters Convention at the Doubletree Hotel, Portland. Um, organization is a nonprofit that donates to professionals that work with autism patients. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Has two great looking parties, a costume contest, and a foam dart war on the trade show floor. Um, so yes, go to hauntersconvention.com for more. And July 29th through the 31st, it's Southeast Hollows Haunt Convention in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, to declare. <laughs> S-E-H-H-C dot com for more info on that one as details become available. Yes. <laughs> um, also, I wanted to throw in here, I know it's not in the notes, Haunters Against Hate is making several appearances at um, conventions. Yes. So be sure to follow them and see where they're going to be. They just put out a whole calendar list of things. So yeah, HauntersAgainstHate dot com, find mm-hmm. their appearances list. Find, find their list. Yeah, they're doing a lot of shows. Uh, Paul is yeah. going to be doing some serious traveling, it looks like. Um, so, yeah, good good luck, buddy, and um, mm-hmm. happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Never going to die, is it? Not if you keep that up. All right. So, before we get into the news proper this week, I want to say there were two tons of stories mm-hmm. about haunts opening for Valentine's Day this year, which uh, we're on Super Bowl Sunday today, so this is uh, we're recording this, and so Valentine's weekend is this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I think this was more coverage on this than I saw pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I, I think maybe the pandemic made this novel again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a weird thought. But seriously, a lot of coverage, a lot of ones like Field of Screams had like six articles about them opening. It was incredible. Um, so yeah, I'll be curious though because this year's uh, Valentine's Day weekend overlap with Super Bowl Sunday. Right. Now I know from experience at our haunt, Sundays are not the busiest days, and a lot of haunts may not have even been open. They might have done Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. But I'll be interested to see if Super Bowl Sunday provided. Mm-hmm. Some kind, because like I said, when, when I talk about haunt competition, I rarely talk about the other haunted houses in town. Mm-hmm. I talk about the other things people could do than go to haunted houses. Yeah, and the Super Bowl definitely meets that criteria. <laughs> yes, oh. yes, it would. Oh, Crystal's laughing uh, maniacally, and you just yeah. can't see it. What's going on? Um, no, I'm just thinking about if you know you had a haunt that showed the Super Bowl because <laughs> they got a, a way to show it. And that, you know, you picked your team's side, and if your team did good, then you didn't get scared, and the other team got scared, like their fans in the in the viewing seats. <laughs> and if, if your team did bad, then your team got scared, your fans got scared. <laughs> that would have been a hell of a thing to do with this one, apparently. I didn't watch I it. I'm not much of a concussion no. ball guy, but um, apparently it was, a, it was a good game, though. Yeah. And apparently yeah, some guy named Eli Apple's about to get murdered. 
I don't know what happened, but my my Facebook is lit about how Eli Apple is well not and not in a good way right now. Oh, okay. Apparently, well, he I blew am... something for the Bengals and cost him the game. I have no idea. I have no idea either. That's the first time I've heard that name. <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought it was a made up name the first time I saw it. To be honest with you, but then it kept coming up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I don't do sports like at all. So that's why I run Haunt Weekly, not Sports Weekly or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I try to talk about things I might know at least something about. Mm -hmm. I know. Wild idea, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, seriously, on the Hall on the uh, Valentine's Day shows, congrats on all the great media coverage, y'all. Yeah. Seemed like a lot of news places were very, very interested in this. All right, moving into our first real story. Mm -hmm. uh, we have discussed... I Okay, I'll just read the headline first. Uh -huh. Auckland Haunted House Attraction Spookers on Sale for Third Time. Um, we've talked about Spookers multiple times on this podcast, about a documentary that featured them. Uh -huh. they've, they've come up in the news a lot. I'm going to make an argument that they are probably the most famous haunted attraction not in the United States. Yeah, I, I think that's a Most internationally fair... famous, you know. Most famous, like, here in the United States to us. Yeah. Like, I can't name very many non-U.S. haunted attractions. Other than ones we know in Canada, because we happen to know the people that run them. Yeah. <laughs> That's cheating, though. Yeah. But, like... And, like, we know that Japan has a culture around haunted yeah, houses. Yeah, and lots and of little pop-up things. In fact, there was... But I don't know one specific in mind. Yeah, I don't have a name for any of them. So, yeah, and, and that's just it. We know they exist, and we know that yeah. they're becoming increasingly popular and increasingly a big part of the industry, but I don't know the names of them. Probably know the names of, like, damn near 100 U.S. ones. Yeah, yeah, but Spookers is definitely one of the ones that we have in our brain. Um, and this is actually the third time that they're trying to sell it. Yeah, this is a frustrating story in its own yeah. way. But basically what happened is they the owners have been trying to sell the attraction. They want someone to come in and sort of take the financials off of them and yeah. they want and keep the haunt strong mm -hmm. is basically the way they're proposing it um, and they have been trying to do this for quite some time and it's back on the market he said for the third time and the, technically it was supposed to be sold the last time but the buyer and seller the, the deal fell through on the day of the transaction yeah. and it was right before or right around the time COVID was taking off yes and right around the COVID lockdowns um, so yeah they basically had that fall through and then had no real chance to put it back on the market or do anything with it until now. Yeah. So that's rough. That's a terrible, it's a terrible fucking story. And I'm wishing them and their army of 140 actors. Uh, good. Yeah. Jesus Murphy. That is a lot. Yes. <laughs> that's a lot. But no, I'm wishing them. I mean, it's actually about the size of a lot of U.S. haunts, a lot of bigger U.S. haunts. But I'm yeah. always kind of. But I'm still every time I hear 140 actors anywhere, it's like. Fuck. Yeah. Doing I a am, dozen is like hurting cats. Yeah. I'm not taking on that job. Actually, no. <laughs> I would rather hurt cats because I have a catnip treat box and I can make them follow me anywhere. Fuck, I won't. <laughs> I can hurt cats. I can't hurt actors. <laughs> uh, Here, kitties. Get the little catnip tweets. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Can't do that with actors. I tried. <laughs> they go, why the fuck are you shaking a cat treat box at me? I'm not a cat. <laughs> No, you, you give them the, the cat treat box with noisemakers in it and tell them to shake it yeah. at the customers. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Um, so, yeah, but here's hoping the sale goes well, that this time around they're able to hit, get it sold conclusively. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and the, the haunt keeps going strong because the documentary, um, Spookers, right. was awesome. Yeah, that was. was one of my genuinely favorite haunt, haunted attraction documentaries I've ever seen. Um, that one was really good and really interesting. And it really, to me, gave me the family feel of it. Because even though it's a workplace, um, you know, mm -hmm. people are being paid. Um, it really, you got this vibe that, like, yeah, this is where, you know, you go to belong. This is where you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I loved it. And it's just such an endearing place based upon, you know, at least the documentary. Which I guess that would be their job to kind of make it endearing. Yeah. But regardless, good luck to you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a story that uh, ties directly into our question of the week. Um, 
Oh, and you t you lead in. Sorry, I forgot I took the first one this time. I usually take the second. Well, well, yeah, but it's bad because I wrote the one for the first one, and you wrote, you wrote the, the one for the second one. one. All right, I'll, how about this? <laughs> so I'll take, take this it. one. And I'll then, do the next one. <laughs> okay, fair enough, because I'm a big, thicky bobo. <laughs> All right. Maybe I have anemia. <laughs> no. No, okay. No. Oh, no. Okay, this is um, from Science Daily. Haunted house experience scares up interesting insights on the body's reaction to threats. Ooh. Newly published study looks at the fear reactions people have going through a haunted attraction. Um, and it was published in the Association for Psychological Science journal. Um, and they basically what they did is they studied guests as they went through a 17-room haunted house. So a fairly big haunted house. Yeah. So this isn't this isn't our haunted house. It's a fairly sizable haunted house. Yeah, I, I Probably medium, -ish. yeah, medium size, but yeah. a, but that's probably the best size it's for this big. type of yeah, study. Exactly, because so. you're going to get a lot of put uh, throughput, you get, and also still not eat up all the time. In yeah, the world. exactly. So now this is probably a good size for. It. Um, what they did is they made participants wear real-time psychological monitoring wristbands that track things like blood pressure, how much you were sweating with skin conductivity. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was O2, your, your pulse rate, things like that. I don't know if it tracked like blood pressure, but it, it tracked your breathing. Basically, this thing's an Apple Watch. I don't really know why they just didn't say it was an Apple Watch. <laughs> <laughs> you probably prob didn't have the uh, consent from Apple. Probably not, and it probably wasn't an actual Apple Watch. It just does the same type hey, of stuff. Hey, if I go to a haunted house and get an Apple Watch <laughs> return. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, damn it, it's the Apple Watch 3. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. You can't even update those. Yeah, here you go. You can have it back. You can have it back. I don't want this stinky thing. Uh, no, no, but that wasn't what happened. No. Uh. Would have been nice, though. We can dream. But so, yeah, you know, but here's the thing. They also had participants rate their expected fear going in. So, like, mm -hmm. Crystal and I, because we are we work in haunts and run the one one and do them all the time, probably would have said, like, oh, yeah, I'm expecting, like, a two or a three. Yeah. I'm expecting some good startles, maybe some good jolts, but I'm not, like, terrified going in. Right. And then someone that's a, as they say in New Orleans, they scary, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, might be saying a 9 or a 10 or 8 or a 9 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then they had them on the back side after they came out rate the actual fear and the actual experience. Mm -hmm. And so that way they could get the subjective analysis of how scared they were too. So that way you're getting both the biological signals and the subjective analysis. And of course you're probably videotaping everything. And yeah. I'm assuming that at least. Yeah. So yeah, but anyways... Here are the key lessons learned, and some of these really freaking surprised me. Mm -hmm. The main one that surprised me, the main like takeaway from this, was that those who went through haunted houses with more friends had a stronger reaction. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to say something stupid that sounds incredibly stupid here, but I think you'll know what I mean. That is counterintuitive as fuck to me. Oh, yeah, it is. But it matches the evidence I've seen at our haunt. Yeah, yeah. It's still counterintuitive. You still can't make my brain understand it. No. But it's it, it, it tracks what I have seen. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And, uh, I mean, because I, I guess when people are by themselves, they kind of, like, puff up and, like, I'm... I need to be scared for my, or need to be strong for myself. Well, the theory that they were working on was something called fear contagion, mm -hmm. which is you're picking up on the fear signals of your friends. You know them, you've been around them, so you know when they're in fear, and that causes you to fear more. Yeah. That's what they're suspecting, which is interesting and raises a very important question that is not answered by the study. What happens if you go through with strangers? Mm-hmm. Like what we were talking about at the beginning, where, hey, can you come up here and go with this guy? Yeah. What well, happens then? Yeah, and often we get put with in a group of strangers. Yeah, we're just a group of two. And if another, when oftentimes if a haunt's only doing groups of four, they'll pair us up with another couple. Yeah. And, and half the time we never see them again. Yeah. And, <laughs> like after the first room. No. And lots of times, you know, we ask to be put with other people if it's a haunt that we knows know. us. A haunt that knows us and a haunt we know. Yeah. Like when we go to Rise or any of the local haunts. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Just... Do. Year over year. Yeah. We try to talk to them and, and they're getting us to go with another couple. Yeah. At least. Or a small family. And yeah. Because the thing is this. We... Uh, we 
we're worn, I guess we're like worn out or something. I guess we're, we're useless in haunts. We're not going to react as strongly as people that go to haunts less. But by seeing how other people react, we can make judgments about the effectiveness of scares we might miss. Exactly. Well, and it's also because we have familiarity with the haunts in the area. Um, it's hard. It's harder to surprise us. Yeah. You know, so um, we always like going with other people just so that we can react, see their reactions. Yeah. Because we know that we we don't act normally. No, we're not no. normal customers. We never will be. Try as I might, I we will never be a normal customer again. Probably. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. It's going to be interesting if we do haunt season this year, and we're hoping to. Mm -hmm. uh, we really, really are, and it's looking that way. Things are looking pretty good right now. Um. Um. Don't yeah. jinx it, Jonathan. Yeah. No. Don't don't say anything too fucking stupid here. But but no. Um. We've been away from haunts for two years now. Yeah. What's this gonna? What is that gonna do for us? Yeah, yeah. I I really hope we're able to get out. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Um, I, I'm looking forward to a trip. Hopefully, Ohio still is the plan. But you know, wherever we go, we're gonna have a great time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so basically, though, the more friends you go through, the stronger the reaction gets, and you pick up on those fear signals of your friends and respond. No word on if that applies to strangers. Um, and the second one is obvious as fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, those that felt more fear going in, those that rated the pre-survey higher, mm -hmm. were, were more vulnerable throughout. Of course they were. Yeah. Pump was primed. Yeah. That's just obvious to me. I don't even know why that was a test. But here's something else that was interesting. Those that had a very strong response in the first room, so one very strong response, mm -hmm. um, had increased responses later. It's like they got the heart rate up, and it got to stay up, and they stayed in that fight-or-flight mode through the whole haunt. But those that had very frequent responses, they got scared multiple times in yeah. the first room, it wore out. They decreased over time. Huh. That sounds like something we've talked about. Yeah. And about not hitting people too hard, too right, especially in the beginning. Yeah. And so, yeah, here's the thing. Your first room, um, hit them hard, hit them good, and make it a one-off pop that will, uh, you know what I mean, just light everything on fire. Yeah. And watch your other scares down the line do better and better and better. But if you start attack, attack, attacking, the study shows it will wear down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is a very interesting study. I'm going to actually, I just found this a few, about a few hours ago. I've not had time to read the full paper. I will do that over the weekend, over, over the week probably. But I am very curious about this. This is an interesting study. And even though the goal of this was not to help haunters, it was very much not designed to help us design better haunts. <laughs> it was meant to study psychology. You know, that's how the fuck we're going to use it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I wonder if, um, because studies, scientific studies have to be done by multiple teams at multiple mm. locations to, to recreate the same results, yeah. to try to recreate them. Yeah. So I wonder if haunts could partner with local universities who do fear study or to do a fear study and get some grant money to upgrade their security cameras and shit. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Let us know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. Okay, <laughs> you do the next one now. Free money? No, that's not a good idea. Um, okay, spooky Do you want to earn more money? <laughs> sure, we all do. And now I'm old, because I remember that <laughs> fucking commercial. Oh, God. I, I don't. Um, all right. Spooky swap me. How you are you? are older than me. <laughs> Su what was that uh, the chick? Suzanne, Sum what was her name? Um, Suzanne Summers, I think. Was, uh, that comes out talking about mail order degrees. Oh. It was some kind of correspondent school back before we had like online college and ships in the 80s. Okay. A anyway, never mind. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So the Spooky Swap Meet is returning again to Heritage Square this year, marking the six month mark to Halloween. Uh, this article is by Mike Wilton of AllHallowsGeek.com. Um, it's coinciding with the six-month countdown. So, yay for reminding us we're six months out. Yeah, fuck you. Well, it's not until... Uh, I know. It's not for a little while. It's not until April. Yeah, it's not until April. So calm down um, a little bit. Yeah, here. April 30th through May 1st. Um, and it's going to be in Los Angeles. 
and it's a curated shopping experience of all things macabre. It sounds absolutely like a blast to me. Yeah, I would love to do this. Like, gothic home decor, antiques, plus haunted house stuff. And they're going to have, they've, um, because there's like a manor in the middle of the square, apparently. And they're, they're decorating it for Halloween and doing trick-or-treating in the middle of April, or yeah. at the end of April. And it's being of um, sponsored by some haunts, including uh, yeah. the Veer Farm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Bones Gulch Haunted Attraction. And yeah, it looks, that's interesting. So yeah, very cool stuff. I, I, I love the idea of a haunted swap meet, personally. Yeah. we had There was one that was held at HauntCon, the, the one they did in Baton Rouge. They had one. Mm-hmm. And we bought a few things from it. But that one it was a haunted garage sale. Yeah, I think they had one here, too, but we didn't stick around on the last day for it. Yeah. Because it was way after everything else had ended. Yeah, and we and by that point, even though we were... Actually, I think the reason we were so tired is because we were local. Uh-huh. And because we were local, we were getting in a shitload more trouble in the evenings than we would have <laughs> than we did in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Yeah, a 90-minute drive back home from Baton Rouge sucks. But it doesn't take as much out of you like three hours of drinking and debauchery and um, uh, more than three. Yeah, <laughs> you mean three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Six, seven hours. God knows when that shit ended. Yeah. Oh my God, so much fun though. Yeah. All right. The Sony Association of the Arts awards a local art students during inaugural exhibit. That was a hell of a headline. Yeah. By the Forsyth News. Um, so this one, they they did a a contest for high school students, um, but the thing that was really interesting mm-hmm. is that they exhibited posters that were designed for the Coming Scare Fair, mm-hmm. which was a haunted house thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it was judged mm-hmm. by the staff of the City of Coming and the House of Four Sites Haunted Attraction. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. This is both of these stories right here. These two stories are great stories of how haunted attractions in the middle of the off season, mm-hmm. when ain't shit going on in the haunted attraction community, right? Um, really, and believe me, we know now. <laughs> <laughs> um, ain't shit going on. Are doing great public deeds, getting their names out there, solidifying their place as good public citizens, and getting support. This is. This is smart, because like we have said a hundred times before, if you ingrate yourself to your community, they will do everything in their power to keep you open. Yeah. And if you don't, you piss them off, they will do everything in their power to shut you down. Yeah, building those community um, networks is important. Yeah. It really and truly is. I think this is awesome all around, and just, yeah, kudos to everyone. And, and there were some really cool posters. Yeah, there were. This is one of the times we can't do it justice in an audio-only format. Yeah. If we really, I mean, if we bring back the video component, maybe I can put some of these up on the screen. Yeah, and congratulations to the winners of the regular part of the contest. Yes. Um, but they were they were not spooky. Yeah. But, but it's still very, very cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. After that, we've got a series of stories that are not directly haunted attraction related, but are haunted attraction adjacent. Yeah. That we wanted to share because we knew we'd be wrapping up a little too early if we didn't do more stuff. So Crystal has got the next one, actually. Right. Scariest scene <laughs> in Hell House LLC actually makes clowns worse somehow. Um, this is by Matt Donato and Ariel Fisher. At Slash Film. At Slash Film. Yes. Slash Film. Um, basically, this is going to be another one... It's it's a take on... It's a mockumentary. You make yeah, it. basically. You know, they've got found footage quotes around that. As many quotes as you can get around that. <laughs> um, <laughs> with, um, with actual scenes from haunted houses, kind of like Houses October Built did. Yeah. And they're, they're saying, you know, everybody knows that this is fake and just for fun, but what if it was real? You know? Yeah, and I read the article and a little bit about the movie. It talks about an incident that happened in 2009, mm-hmm. supposedly. It's structured like this is a documentary about something that happened 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. And they're interviewing this lone survivor. They're showing the found footage from the security cameras and whatnot and all that. And it's a, 
it's an interesting concept. I think this has the potential to be way more interesting than Houses at October Built. Yeah. And if you go back, we did our review of Houses at October Built way, way back. Yeah. We did not find the movie super effective. Mm-hmm. And honestly thought it was pretty derogatory to one of the attractions. Yeah. They, they, not so much like the actual fiction part, where they were like doing the... the 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 crew that runs the scary haunted house comes and kills them and kidnaps them and all that you know the fiction part the the part where they were quote unquote interviewing people that worked at haunted attraction they were talking about regular haunted attractions not the supernatural one that was at the center no yeah. and they were saying things like yeah anybody can work one of these you got rapist murderers working in, in these places yeah that just didn't sit with me no that was problematic that was deeply problematic um and, and it bugged me because. Yeah. That's not true. At least it no. should not be true. It should not. Um, but yeah, I mean, and basically, you know, we want to be roller coaster scary, not breaking down roller coaster scary. Yeah. yeah. There's a big difference <laughs> between those two things. People yes. will flock to a roller coaster for fun. People will not block to flock to a roller coaster that's actively breaking down. No. Unless you're playing Sim Theme Park. At which <laughs> point, all bets are off. Because <laughs> those people are fucking stupid. Well, they're programmed to be. True. True enough. All right. All right. This next one's one dear to my heart. We have a birthday to celebrate this month. The um, Atari game Haunted House turned (laughs) 40. Fuck you. Okay. Hey, (laughs) fuck you. Fuck whoever, pop, fuck, now fuck Mike Wilson from Bloody Disgusting <laughs> for publishing this article and making me feel fucking older than I already fucking feel. <laughs> you know, fuck you, Mike Wilson. Seriously, it's a good article, though. No, it is. It's a great article. I'm just joking. Obviously, I'm just joking, but seriously, fuck you. <laughs> but also, fuck you, you know? God damn it. Oh, man. But yes, I remember this game. I remember getting it and being as confused as pissed by it, not understanding what to do. And it was only as an adult I ever learned that oh you got to read the I'll read the fucking manual because mm-hmm. kids don't read fucking manuals no and that's an Atari it's got one joystick and one button how much how complicated it should be turns out pretty complicated yeah yeah turns out it's actually uh, very similar to a game called Adventure which was released the year before big shock Atari was recycling shit mm-hmm. in the uh, early eighties I know such a such a shock but basically it involves you the main character running around a haunted house, trying to collect a family urn and other treasures and get out with your life as you dodge ghosts and monsters that you cannot fight. You can't hurt them. Mm. But they can hurt you by calling you mean names. Mm. No, okay, that's not true. They just hurt you the old-fashioned way. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. But no, it's a... It, 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 it's like if it's just yelling at people, that's what haunted houses are like. That's true. The attraction it, ones. So... Now I'm confused because I've never played the game. Well, it, no, it's 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 actually a very good game. It is fun, but like I said, you got to read the manual and understand what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I beat it on some of the easier levels and never really felt the need to try a harder one because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's also a very it, it's it's one of those games that's complicated. But once you read the manual and understand it, it's a simple game. Gotcha. And that, that makes any sense. It's both simple and complicated at the same time. But once you've got past the little bit of complexity, it's You only need to play it a few times, realistically. But it's a good game. And I did have a lot of fun with it as a kid. It was one of the first games... It was probably one of only a handful of Atari 2600 games I bought for myself. Mm. My dad uh, brought down the Atari system from the attic when I took an interest in video games in, like, 84. Yeah. And hooked me up. And I remember going to Toys R Us and, by that point, rapidly dwindling Atari aisle. Yeah. And picking out games. And I got Haunted House. I got Pitfall. That mm. one was a that one was a fucking blast. Mm-hmm. But yes, thanks for reminding me that Haunted House turned forty. You fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. All right, now for an adorable story. Yeah, this one's just cute. Yeah, so two year old's best friend is a skeleton, and the internet's loving it. This yes, is by it. Trisha Lee Zanghorn. Yeah. Uh, that's it, Zanghorn. I, I know what we'll do. We'll go. It's from AwkwardMom.com. Yeah. Which, okay, great site name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect for this, especially. I bet this is an awkward mom sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, but a cute um, story about a two-year-old, Theo, who loves Benny, a five-foot skeleton. We have 
you know, replicas of Benny, obviously not the one that yeah. that lives with Theo. Yes. Um, but we have the same style um, here. And his mother, Abigail, takes the skeleton with Theo everywhere. They go to the beach. They go on picnics. They pose for pictures. If this is not an Instagram account, I am going to be deeply disappointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, they were getting, they were looking at the Halloween decorations and... Theo just decided that that was his and tried to take it upstairs. Um, the mom thought they were just going to start decorating early, but no, he just wanted a friend, uh, according to the article. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It, this this kid's... Who hasn't had a problem, though, their kid adopting their Halloween decor? I mean, yeah. really? Yeah. Well, we have, and we don't have kids. But <laughs> if we did, That's true. we absolutely would have had that problem. Yeah. No, you can't. No, you can't have that one. That's one of the expensive skeletons. <laughs> Take one of the cheap ones. <laughs> we ain't made of money around here. But yeah, no, it is adorable. The photos in this article are adorable too. So yeah, I would definitely another one of those times you definitely want to check the link once again, hauntweekly.com for the link show notes. I finally figured out a way to get the URLs on the YouTube version too. Oh, cool. Uh, so you can go to YouTube.com/hauntweekly and find it there as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's been a kind of a battle trying to figure out how to do show notes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, with all this. All right. Well, finally, we got a bit of a shout out here. Yeah. Want to give a little love mm -hmm. to Chris Screws. Yeah. Why are we giving love to Chris Screws? Because um, his school is going to be the official special FX Signature Academy. And Jefferson, Jefferson County, County Schools. I just wanted to hear someone else say it, because that was a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. Basically, students in Penson Valley High School, Mortimer Jordan High School, and Centerpoint High School. Which, why Centerpoint wasn't in the middle of the fucking list, I don't know. I don't know Whoever either. wrote that list should be, should be ashamed of themselves. Mm -hmm. Just openly. Uh, basically, they can request admission to the Academy starting March 7th. So coming up faster than you probably think, people... If mm -hmm. that describes you, any of that describes you, get on it. Mm -hmm. Yes, basically, though, uh, he went on to say so many people have helped us get to this point, and he wanted to say a thank you to Justin McElroy, mm -hmm. Justin McElroy and the crew of Insanitarium Haunted Attraction for basically funding the project to this point. Yeah. That is awesome. It is. Um, follow Chris on Facebook, and you'll see his students' work. It'll put some uh, really? adults yeah, yeah. at haunted houses to shame because they they do a really good job teaching the kids yeah. how to do special effects. Yeah, this if is, you ever get a chance to take one of his classes at a convention, do it. Yeah, Chris Cruz is an amazing dude, mm -hmm. and yeah, um, here's the thing: it's it's always kind of weird to me because like in the movie world. Practical special effects have kind of fallen by the wayside a lot. Mm -hmm. And we've watched, and I, I grew up watching movies by like, people like Tom Savini and so forth. They did just amazing practical effects. And once you went over the, oh, that's a lot of guts, you sort of go, okay, what did they use for that? <laughs> you, know, you kind of, okay, could that have been sheep intestines? Oh, no, it wouldn't look like that. You know, you, you, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like trying to figure out the magic trick yeah. from the magician. And I love that element of it. And so it's it's, a, it's an art that I don't think is dying, but is definitely not as appreciated as it was just a few just early in our lives, just a few decades ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy to see this happening. I hope that this is a great way to keep this strong and keep the, and prepare the next generation of our haunted attraction makeup artists mm -hmm. and special effects artists. It's gonna be great. Yeah. All right. Well, that is all we have for this week. And so, yeah, we are going to wrap up a few minutes early, I know. So disappointed. But like I said, it's been really dead for news. Um, yeah. yeah, we are gearing up towards Mardi Gras here. Um, that's true. That's our horror, our horror season right now. Huh. Yeah, we got Mardi Gras due to come up March 1st, I believe. is Mardi Gras Day this year. Yeah. And we're apparently having it, even though we have both an indoor mask requirement and an indoor vaccine requirement. Mm-hmm. So vax and mask indoor. So if you are coming to New Orleans for Mardi Gras, be aware of those two things. You will need proof of vaccination, and you will need to wear masks indoors. 
Um, and trust me when I say this, the places in the French Quarter are fucking enforcing it. Yes, yes they are. I, I will admit elsewhere in the city enforcement is eh, hit yeah. and miss a little time. But in the French Quarter, we spent a day in the French Quarter not that long ago. And our friend works there. And our friend works there. So, But we spent a day in the French Quarter bar and restaurant hopping and store hopping. Mm-hmm. And every place enforced it. Every place you would sit down to eat or drink at enforced it religiously. Yeah. So just, just know what you're getting into if you want to eat and drink um, inside in New Orleans at Mardi Gras. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it will be an interesting experience. We've gotten to become old curmudgeons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't Mardi Gras much anymore. We used to make it a point every year to go to the Crew to View, which was this weekend. We didn't go. No. And looking at the photos of it, I'm very fucking glad we did, and that was a crowd that was... Well, yeah, and honestly, we haven't been in, like, ten years because yeah. the crowd got too big. Yeah. It got too popular, and we just stopped going. And it's the, cl- it's the classic New Orleans trope that locals say, which is, the tourist found it. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's really kind of what happened. It became a tourist thing unto itself. And now, in addition to the locals that we're also adding to it and growing that that mm-hmm. group, we now have tourists, too. So it's like, you know, I remember when I first time I heard someone say, the tourists have found Frenchman Street. Yeah. They, they'd always found Frenchman Street. <laughs> yeah. That was the worst kept secret ever. Yeah. But anyways. So, yeah. That's about all this week. So thank you very much for spending the past 45 minutes or so with us. We greatly appreciate your time. Thank you very much with your patience. It is our great pleasure to produce these every week for you. And if you want to catch more Haunt Weekly, you can do so at hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook. That is realistically the main place to be. Mm-hmm. Um, YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly is the YouTube channel. Every episode we've ever done is there. I have no idea why the images for the past two episodes have been fuckered. <laughs> I did not do anything different. I think it's an issue with the company I use to produce the audio, the finished audio. And if it happens again, I'm going to have to figure something else out. So, one more shot. Uh, I'm getting it right. Uh, but also, always check us out wherever you get your podcasts from. Google Play, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Podbean, wherever. Mm-hmm. Wherever floats your boat. But until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this has been episode 324 of Haunt Weekly doing the January-February news. We will see you all next week. <laughs>